What's up everyone, glad you're back. Today I wanna to talk about my personal favorite topic when it comes to backpacking, and that is how to set up a tarp. So the first thing that I wanna do here is enjoy my morning walk just a little bit. And then I'll run through the different gear that you'll need. Then I'll go through knots. There's only three of them, uh, nothing too scary. Then we'll go through how to select a site. And then finally I'll do a couple of different pitches. When it comes to gear, there's really only four things that you need. The first of which is obviously a tarp. I have a Z-Pax 8.5 by 10 tarp. It's made out of DCF. Really, you can go with anything that you want. I'm just gonna recommend something that has straight edges, so not curved. They're otherwise known as flat tarps. And also, you're gonna want something that's just a little bit oversized while you're learning, so that there's a little bit more room for air. Second up, you're gonna need two trekking poles. I have Z-Pax trekking poles. Again, you can kind of go with whatever you have or whatever you prefer. I just like to have something that has flip locks. I find them a little bit easier to work with. The next thing that you're gonna need is line. I take eight sections with me, two 10-foot sections and six five-foot sections. This is Samson Zingit. Really, when you go and you pick out line, you're really just gonna look for something that has little stretch to it or no stretch to it, ideally, right? You want something that's relatively stiff so that it's easy to work with. And then you want something that's grippy so that your knots are gonna hold. Anything that says either Dyneema or Spectra is gonna be a good sign. And I like something that's around one and a half millimeter thick. I find that that's kind of the sweet spot for being thin enough that it's easy to work with and your knots hold, but thick enough that it's still easy to take the knots apart again later. And then finally, you're gonna need eight stakes. I'd recommend going with a good Y-shaped stake. I know that there's lighter options out there like nail stakes, or you can do titanium shepherd hooks or something like that, but they're not gonna hold nearly as well in loose soil. And especially as you're learning, you're gonna want something that's just a little bit more reliable. I use MSR Groundhogs, highly recommend them. I've had them for years and I have yet to bend one. So this is as good a spot as any to, to talk about knots here. I know knots can be a little bit intimidating if you haven't done them before, but trust me, just practice at home. You'll get used to it. Sooner or later, it's like muscle memory. Once you've done it enough times, you're just not gonna forget it. So try not to stress too much uh, if you're not used to using knots. That said, there's only three that you're gonna have to remember here. One, we're gonna use a bowline knot, and that's what we're gonna use to tie our lines onto our tarp. The second one's gonna be a trucker's hitch, and that's what we're gonna use to tie our lines to our stakes. And then third, you're gonna want a clove hitch, and that's what we're gonna use to attach our line to our trekking poles. So let's get the tarp out, and we'll kind of run through each knot one by one, and then we'll go ahead and we'll set up a couple of, uh, of different configurations here. Also, I should mention here that the reason that we're using knots instead of line locks is a few different things. One, you're gonna be able to get a much better tension on the shelter using the knots that we're gonna be talking about today. Two, it's gonna make it really, really easy to move the lines around. So everything that we're gonna build is gonna have a slip loop on it so that you can easily just take the line off the shelter and move it somewhere else if you wanna have a longer or shorter line uh, at a certain point. And three, if you're using knots, uh, you're gonna be able to uh, use any different kind of line that you want. So in other words, if you have line locks, you're basically stuck using whatever uh, line it's actually made for in terms of thickness. Whereas if you're using knots, you can really use, you know, sort of whatever suits your fancy. The first knot that we're gonna make is gonna be our bowline knot. I've got my tarp here. This is the corner and you can see I have the, the webbing loop on the end and then I have my line. With your line, you're obviously gonna have a, a long end and a, and a short end. I'm gonna take my line. I'm gonna feed it through the webbing loop like so. And then I'm gonna make a, a loop in the long end And that loop is gonna be such that the short end is on top. Then we're gonna take our short end, we're gonna feed it through the loop, we're gonna go around the long end, and then back through our loop. And then you can just pull it tight. And what you have there is a bowline knot. It's a really, really strong knot. Uh, it's gonna work well for for securing your line on your tarp. But what I like to do to make things just a little bit easier and to make it easy to move things around, instead of feeding through the end like that, I like to put a little loop on it, feed that through instead, and then tighten it down that way. So that way when I wanna move my lines around, all I have to do is just tug on this, 
and the whole knot comes apart. Now that we have our line on our tarp, the second knot that we wanna learn is gonna be the trucker's hitch. This one's pretty easy as well. All we're gonna do is just make a loop in our cord like that. We're gonna feed a piece of the long end through that loop, and now we have a slip loop. Pull on it, it collapses. Again, kind of the whole point of this system here is that it's easy to take apart and, and move around as you need to. But we're gonna make our loop, feed this through, then we take the long end, which would be wrapped around a stake at this point over on this side, feed it through, and then create a loop. And tie it off. Then you have something that looks like that. And again, the nice thing about this is that we've created a, a slip loop in here. So all you have to do is just tug and the whole thing will come apart when it's not under load. And our third and final knot here is the clove hitch. And we use this to connect our tarp lines to our trekking poles. So just like with the other ones, we start with a loop. So we have that there and we have another loop. So now we basically have like a, like a spiral going on in, in the line. All you do is just take the loops and then just reverse their position. So the bottom loop goes on top of the top loop. And we take our trekking pole, put it in here, and then tighten it up. And that's gonna be a really, really strong knot. Um, the trekking pole is not gonna wanna twist or, or anything like that, like it would if you had just wrapped the line around. The next thing that we should talk about is site selection. So first and possibly the most important rule is make sure that you're following leave no trace principles. Camp in established campsites and make sure that you're camping on durable surfaces. Other than that, we wanna make sure that we're not sleeping in any dips or depressions that are gonna collect water if it happens to rain overnight. Also, the more drainage that you can have in the soil below you, the better. So in other words, try not to camp on things that are hard and compacted uh, or stone if you can avoid it. Also, and this goes for camping in a tent as well, but please make sure that you're looking above you just to make sure that there's no branches that are dead or hanging that might come down if it gets windy overnight. All right, so at this point, we can start setting up our tarp. So I'm gonna go through two separate pitches today. One's gonna be the lean-to, which gives you a ton of space. Uh, it's really wide open. It's great for just hanging out under. You can cook under it and, and all of that great stuff. Um, but it's not necessarily the best in harsh weather, like strong winds or, or you know excessive rain or, or anything like that. And then the second one that we'll go through, which is much better for inclement weather, is gonna be the A-frame pitch. So let's get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is tie a trucker's hitch on each tie out point, three of them, along one of the long ends of the tarp. And this is gonna be the side that we're then gonna stake into the ground. So now that we have the back side of the tarp staked out, we're gonna grab our trekking poles and we're gonna use them to elevate the front side. We're gonna tie them onto the tarp using a clove hitch and then we're gonna use a trucker's hitch to attach uh, the lines going from the trekking poles to the stake in the ground. And finally, we'll move and tighten our stakes to smooth everything out. Really, you just kind of get a feel for it, but just sort of move them around and tighten them as needed so that you get a flat surface. And there we have our completed lean-to. As you can see, it's moving 
relatively good in the breeze when it blows here. So again, this isn't something that you're gonna wanna use in excessively windy weather. It will basically act as a sail and those stakes will come right up no matter how good they are. Um, so again, this is more of a fair weather shelter. Uh, maybe you wanna keep a light sprinkling of rain or just like pine needles or whatever off of you, but it's also gonna give you the, the most open view of your surroundings. Up next, we have our A-frame. Again, this is gonna be the more storm-worthy of the two pitches, and I'm gonna start by staking out uh, one of the short ends with trucker's hitches. Now that we have our first side staked out, I'm gonna grab my trekking pole, and then I'm gonna use a clove hitch to raise the opposite end. After that, I'm gonna loosely stake the corners on the side that I just put the trekking pole on. Now that that side's taken care of, we're gonna go back over to the other side and put in our other trekking pole. So at this point, you can see that the shelter is standing, but it looks just a little bit wonky. This is because we set it up relatively loose. Um, now we're gonna go around and tighten everything up and maybe move stakes to get all of our panels straight and flat. And then our final step is to stake out our center tie outs on the panels. Now, the key here is to use just a little bit of tension. You don't wanna to go too crazy with it. We're just trying to smooth out the crinkles and make it a little bit more storm worthy. If you create a V in the side of the panel, you've gone too far. And now we have a nice cozy A-frame shelter. It's a little bit more storm worthy than our, than our lean-to. Uh, why don't we go take a look inside? All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. See ya.